Good morning to everyone. Before I sing a song, I would like to give you an encouraging words. Believing in next year, 2020. Believing is seeing you were created by Almighty God to, to live a blessed and fulfilled life. But so many people live far below the level of what God truly intends for them simply because you don't see how it could happen. The truth is that you have to believe before you're ever going to see something takes place in the natural. You have to look with your eyes of faith because the provision, healing, and miracle that you need is already available in supernatural realm. You might say, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to look with eyes of faith. The way you open your eyes of faith is by reading and meditating of the Word of God. His Word deposits strength and faith inside of you and illuminates your heart. His Word causes your faith to grow so you can believe His promises and when you believe it, then you will see it because all things are possible for those who believe. I would like to give a song entitled, Nothing is Impossible. I believe, 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 I believe,
get you hold you be spent Nothing is impossible to you Blind as an open Strong bones are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible Believe, I believe I believe, I believe in you Lord I believe, I believe I believe, I believe in you Okay, well that was my lovely lady, uh, Erlinette uh, Richards, and uh, my name is Reverend Brian Richards, and in a little while you'll see my son come and read some scriptures, um, and collectively as a family we are the Word of Faith Ministers International. We registered here in Australia, and... Uh, we put the international on to it because we are now going into a variety of different countries. Well, we've been invited to go to Africa and India. Uh, we, we go to the Philippines as often as we can. We have relatives there and uh, we have church there. Last June, June and July, we was there in Philippines and... Uh, we managed to go into the prison and visit the prisoners and bless them with uh, toothbrushes and uh, towels and what else? Toothpaste. Toothpaste, that's right. Okay, toothpaste, brushes and... And so the little gifts like that makes all the difference to their life, uh, makes all the difference to their their uh, salvation and sobriety in life and uh, so just to know that even though they've offended and they've gone into prison um, the world has not forgotten you know and forgives and some of those people that are in the prisons they wait to see a magistrate up to three or four years and in that time they've been punished by sleeping on concrete floors and uh, I went there to preach the gospel and a very hard gospel that I preached uh, like a fire brimstone type of preaching you know because I thought they need discipline in their life which we all do uh, but they needed my love more than the hard word and I realized that when I, I got there to the men um, who had been sleeping on the floors for three or four years waiting for the magistrate to judge them. In other words, they've never been to the magistrate, never presented their case, and uh, some of them, not all of course, but some of them uh, would be innocent, completely innocent, and, uh, and so we have compassion on them, and uh, some of those people that are innocent would be set free immediately um, because they waited four years to present their case. And so uh, sleeping on concrete floors in that time is punishment enough for anyone. And um, of course, the, 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 the health is not so good by that time because of the, the lifestyle in prison is, is not good. Uh, of course, with the other, on the other side of it, of course, the, the, the real criminal would, would be softened uh, enough to repentance so they would receive um, a kind word from God, uh, a kind word from a man of God. And uh, if I went in there preaching a fire and brimstone type of preaching, uh, it wouldn't work for them either uh, because we've learnt over the years that it's the goodness of God that would lead men to repentance. And right now, this is a, a certain time of the year in October where we celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles and uh, according to the Jewish calendar, um, you know, you, you have 
New Year at this time. You have Feast of Weeks at this time, a Feast of Trumpets at this time. And uh, at this particular year and the time in history, we have a Feast of Trumpets, a Jubilee, and all kinds of things that you can mention out of the Bible that you can celebrate. However, you, you know, the, as a, a Gentile, we celebrate uh, uh, Christmas and Easter and, and things like that. And of course, none of this is really mentioned in the Bible that we should do this, you know. In Jeremiah 17, it actually talks about um, pagan festivals and one particular festival is talked about is where they hone down a tree, they cut off a tree and they put it, put the tree up as a memorial and they dress it up with tinsel silver and and, and, and little uh, ornaments. Uh, what does that sound like? Sounds very much like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? And that's because it is. And it, because he, he said that there will be uh, um, pagan worship of that description. And of course now we see it every year. And people are getting ready for it now for Christmas in Philippines. They're very early. You know, they start from now, start celebrating Christmas. And you'll see the decorations going up. But there's nothing in Scripture that says that we should do that as a Christian. Uh, but as Christians, it does say that if you, in uh, Galatians 3.29, it says, if you're Abraham's seed, then you're heirs according to the promise. If you're in Christ, I, uh, this is Galatians 3.29. If you're in Christ, are you in Christ? Amen. Hey, uh, everybody say, yay, yeah, I'm in yeah, Christ. Yeah, yeah. If you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What promise? Well, whatever's promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all those that have gone before us, uh, going down the lineage of you know, Moses and Joshua and all, all of those that have gone before us where God made covenant agreement with different ones. Um, it's also the agreement and the blessing comes on us. If you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Whatever's promised for them before us is also promised to you because you're in Christ because you're a Christian. Isn't that wonderful? should be rejoicing. But there is something to rejoice about. Yes, there is something also, a warning, that if you receive the blessing, they also re would receive the curse if you're disobedient. It says, uh, in Galatians 3.13, it says, Cursed is he who hang on a tree for you and me. And cursed is the man that hangs on a tree. And Jesus hang on a tree or a, a cruel cross for you and for me. And it says that the curse comes on a person that does that, the person that either hung himself on a tree or nailed to a tree, a curse will come up on that person. And so Jesus hung on that tree for you and for me to take away the curse. The curse was put upon him and the sin of all mankind was put upon him. And therefore, we are forgiven because the sacrifice that was paid. He gave himself as a sacrifice for all that would come and believe on him. And of course, there is many that have died as the same death but it doesn't it hasn't paid for their sin because the wages of sin is death and of course if any man uh, commits a sin unto death then they will die the death themselves but it doesn't take away their sin it just that's called retribution you know sin for sin you know you take a life and, they, and you and you, you lose your life and that's called retribution. But these days, 
if you live in a modern day society like we are in uh, Australia or England, America, there are forgiveness. There is forgiveness. And there is a, the price to pay for the wages of sin is death. And that price was paid by Jesus Christ. And if we look towards Jesus, then we don't have to die. We have to present our bodies to him as a living sacrifice and be not conformed to this world, to the ways of this world, but be transformed as we renew our mind with the living word of God. And you become like Christ. You become a loving person and, uh, and therefore you don't look for retribution. And uh, Jesus says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. So you don't look for vengeance. And if somebody done you wrong, I had, a, you know, many people uh, had wrongs due to them uh, every day. And, but if we look at that wrong done to us and we want uh, retribution, if we want revenge, then we're in, we've changed spirit. We're in the wrong spirit. So, but if we stand up for ourselves in righteousness and we say, well, you know, this was the agreement, this is what the Word of God says, and we stand up for ourselves in righteousness, then vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And he will, re he will repay evil for evil, and he'll repay blessing for blessing. In actual fact, it says in scriptures, blessing, I will bless them. Curses, I will curse them. And God says that because we're in Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, one of the promises is that you, whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. Whoever curses Israel will be cursed. And we know Israel is the place over there in the Middle East, but it's also a place in historical, uh, biblical, if you're in Christ and you're Abraham's seed, meaning that you become a Jew by faith, right? Because there's no difference between Jew and Gentiles today. We're all one in Christ. So if you're in Christ, the Jewish uh, blessings come upon you. Hallelujah. And also the same curses that uh, came upon them long ago that was now been taken away by Jesus Christ paying for the curse. But through disobedience, that curse will continue, whatever the curse is. And so we're protected from every curse, even whether they uh, come through the genes like generational curses or where is the curse of disobedience disobedience carries a curse so we're quick to repent and say Lord forgive us for all sin especially the one that comes to mind you repent and he'll stop that curse straight away he'll stop the penalty coming straight away uh, and Jesus paid the price for that now you will understand why we need the cross. We remember the cross. Every day we remember the cross. And uh, as we come together in unity with what the Word of God says, we have communion around the cross of Calvary. And we have forgiveness and we have a restoration of all things that was originally given to the church. So our church assembly is that not only the word of faith, but we have a vision to start a, a new church here called the, the Faith Restoration Mission. And uh, that's our mission, to restore faith to the historical churches and to restore faith to those people 
that have uh, strayed away. And uh, I understand people strain away, they stray away from the, the beliefs of the church where they're at because they do not see the blessing of the Lord. They do not see the glory of the Lord. And so as, as uh, Joshua comes now and he's going to read uh, a couple of scriptures and then I'm going to expound on these scriptures talking about the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Joshua. <laughs> Hello, my name is Josh Bram Richards. Today I'm going to be reading from the Bible about um, the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to be reading from Exodus chapter 23, verses 16 to, uh, to 22, and Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 13. To, uh, wait, no. 1 Samuel, Samuel. chapter 4, verses <coughs> 18 to 22. Mm. And the feast of harvest, the fistful, fist fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and it, the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, which thou hast gathered in thy labours out of the field. Three times in one in the year, all thy male shall appear before the Lord God. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with late leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring on into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not cease a kid in his mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in, thy, in the way, and to bring thee in the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, but for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Next, I'm going to read 1 Samuel chapter 4, verses 16 to 22. And the man said, 18 verses 18 to 22, And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck brake, and he died. For he was an old man, and heavy, and that he had judged Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Finhar, his wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman that, that stood by her said, unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and before of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. Now I'll come back home. Hallelujah. Very good. Very good. Can you read it in that machine version? That's alright. No. It's okay. Alright, so we're a bit worried about the King James Version because we realise that we, we're ministering to Asian people and sometimes they use other translations. But that's okay because what we want to do, um, emphasise on in those scriptures was firstly that uh, in Exodus is saying that uh, I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you and uh, I will be uh, against your enemies and I'll be for the people that bless you and that's that still applies for even though you're a Christian uh, a Gentile Christian then that's that still applies and also if you're a Jew person a Jewish person that comes to Christ, comes to know Christ, then the, the same applies 
to the Jewish Christian that comes, uh, a Jewish person that comes to Christ, the same rules apply that the, the blessings of the Jewish people would come upon the Gentile, but also the curses and the idolatry curses and different things like that that we have as Gentile curses would come upon the Jew also because there's no difference between Jew and Gentile today. And so as we read here uh, in, in Samuel where he's talked about Ichabod and the glory being departed from, you know, from the church, we could say, that uh, in, um, in Samuel chapter 4 and verse 21, um, where we talk about the the, um, the, the daughter-in-law of King Eli, he fell back on his chair and broke his neck. You know, uh, that was his um, reward for speaking against Israel when he's supposed to be judging righteously, and sometimes uh, he, even as a man in authority, a king, or you know. A man of authority that judges unrighteously, God's got a special blessing for him, huh? And so he fell back and broke his neck, and his daughter in law, uh, Finas, is it fin, 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 Finas, uh, a wife, uh, Finas, that, that's his, his son, Finas's wife was in child, ready to give birth, and and King Eli's sons was taken in the, in the battle, and so uh, his daughter-in-law lost her husband, lost her father, uh, all in one day because of the Philistines' um, battle, and so they was lost in battle, and she bowed forward with her child in, in birth and, and gave birth and they called the child Ichabach because the glory of the Lord had departed from Israel because the Ark of the Covenant had been stolen and uh, the Philippi, uh, Philipp Philistines took that um, Ark of the Covenant to be a blessing for them. And later on, as we read through scriptures, we find out it wasn't a blessing at all. And <laughs> they wanted to return it. And uh, so uh, the prophet Samuel was the, the closest thing that they knew of to Israel. So they went and dropped it at uh, Samuel's doorstep. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And so uh, what they seen as a blessing wouldn't was not a blessing to them at all. It was a curse. And sometimes the blessing can be reversed and sometimes the curse can be reversed according to God's covenant that he has with you. And so, as we look at the Ichabod, the glory of the Lord departing, and we see that in the historical churches of today, we could say the glory of the Lord has departed a long time ago and they're just doing lip service now to God and they're doing worship to God, and uh, the glory of the Lord is departed from the church, which is perfectly in order, because really, is what's it doing in the building anyway? The glory of the Lord does not belong in the building anymore. The glory of the Lord has departed from the Ark of the Covenant, because it doesn't belong there anymore. If you look at John 17, Jesus who died for us to give us everything he is for who you are today. He died, took upon your sin and gave you who he is. He gave you his glory. He gave you his name, the name of Jesus. He gave you his word for everything that he is. He gives you today so you can become Jesus in the world today. Jesus is now ascended 
sitting at the right hand of the Father, he's in heaven, in glory land, representing you and I, representing the body of Christ in heaven. And you are representing Jesus Christ here on the earth. So this Bible is called the Great Exchange. We exchange everything Jesus is for everything I am. And I've become everything he is. In the 2 Corinthians 5, around about 21 and verse 22, it says that you have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For he who knew no sin was made sin for you and for me, that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now that's the plan of God. Did it happen? Did he really die? And did he really rose again from the dead? If you say amen to that, amen. then you have become the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And so I used to look at these scriptures many years ago when I first became a student and I would judge and I would repent of my judgment and I'd say, you know, there's no uh, glory in going to this church. There's no, you know, the glory has departed, the anointing that used to be there is no longer there. And I think, well, are you a believer? Are you a born again Christian? And if you say, yes, I am, then that's where the glory should be. It never should have been in the church anyway. You know what I mean? The glory of the Lord was in the Ark of the Covenant. The glory of the Lord was in the church in the Old Testament times, but New Testament times is what Jesus came to to give you, to take away the curse and to give you the blessing. The blessing of the Lord is upon you and the glory of the Lord is within you. And, uh, and that's what Jesus died for. And so... Does the church have an anointing then? Is there any glory in there? Yes, it is when the when the saints get together. When the saints of God come together, it says, when two or three gather in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm in the midst of you. And therefore, when many come together and they worship God, the anointing is there, yes. But when the church is empty, there's no anointing in there. You know and that's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be in you. And the glory of the Lord manifests when the church comes together, when the people come together. We become the lively stones of the temple of God. And the glory of the Lord appears right there. And people get healed. People to get uh, born again. They become sanctified, from separated from the world, separated from their sin, separated from their uh, ailments, and people get healed. The glory is manifest within people's body. Hallelujah. And people get glorified and changed. In uh, John 17 and verse 22, I think it is, uh, where he says, The glory that I had from the beginning... I now give to them. And he says, blessed are you, talking to his disciples, he says, blessed are you because you have seen and believed. And blessed are those even more who have believed and have not seen. That's talking about us. So we believe on their words, on the disciples' words. And he says that we're blessed more than them because we've not seen and yet we believe. You see that? So real faith is now. Now faith is. And uh, and in uh, Hebrews, uh, is it Hebrews 10 or 11? Hebrews 11, I think. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
Hallelujah. And so, if, if you say seeing is believing, you're still not a Christian yet, you know, because you're not going to see unless you believe first. You believe and you will see by faith. Hallelujah. Unless a man comes to the Lord in faith, he doesn't come at all. You know, um, you have to believe God by faith, not by what you see. But if you believe without seeing, then you're going to see a lot more. <laughs> you're going to see a lot more. We see a lot more blessings. Hallelujah. So at this time of the year, it's called the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, and this is the, the Feast of Tabernacles that we're told to remember. We're not told to remember Christmas, not told to remember Easter, or, you know, what it, uh, saints' birthdays or anything else. But we are told that this, the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles will be remembered forever. Why is the Feast of Tabernacles so important? It's because the glory that was in the Ark of the Covenant is now in you, or should be. You know? And as we have that revelation, we have that revelation and we look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, it says in John somewhere, gosh, the scriptures uh, come into my mind and they go just as quick. But this one here, I'll leave this scripture, i plant this scripture in the heart of every believer today. Those that are watching, I want you to receive this into your heart. It says in uh, 1 John, Chapter 3, and this is the epistle of John, not the gospel of John. This is the letter that comes after it. It's the epistle of John. And in John chapter 3, verse 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, you know, it says in, in, um, in, in Romans 8, there's those that, in Romans 8, 14, those that are led of the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Now, it says that, are sons of God. It doesn't say we've become sons of God. We are already sons of God. All right? And it says, Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone, every man, you know, I feel sorry for the women because they look at this and they say, men, 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 men. But he's talking about mankind, every believer, whether you're male or female, whether you're a child or adult, makes no difference. Every believer, this is, every mankind believer, you know. He says, now every man, whether you're man, woman, or child, makes no difference. Every person that has this hope in him purifies himself or purify themselves. Now, just by believing that Jesus is coming and shall appear, when, he's, when Jesus, who is coming very soon, I feel, you know, all the signs, all the predictions and all the warnings out of the Bible, every one of them has happened. As we look at Ezekiel 38, everything has happened and, it, and Jesus is at that doorstep. Jesus is ready to come back anytime soon. And as we have this hope, it says, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. So we say to ourselves, we're not good enough. You know, you ever thought that you're not good enough? You know, I worship, I often worship the Lord even now. And I say, Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough yet. You know, I'm not ready for you to come back. I'm not good enough yet. You know, that's <laughs> that goes for every one of us. 
you know what? We'll never be good enough because we never was good enough. We never will be good enough. But Jesus was the one that was good enough. He was the perfect one that paid the price for you and for me. And it doesn't matter who you are. It matters who he is. You know, he paid the price. And when people say to you, you're not good enough to be a Christian, you're not forgiven, how can you be, how can you say I'm righteous? How can you walk down the street with your head up and your shoulders back like as if you own the place and you are really something? And you just say, well, it's not by what I have become by any means of that I did, but I have become the righteousness of God because of what Jesus did. He paid the price for you and for me, and now I walk in victory. And so I got something to sing about. I got something to shout about. I got Jesus living on the inside for me. And as I walk down the street with my head held high, I walk in the victory and the anointing of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And now I can say I am the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, a brand new creation in him. I am now a partaker of his divine nature. On me will not impute sin. That's the, what the scriptures say in Romans 5, that I am a partaker of his divine nature. And in me he will not impute sin. Would you like to see that in scripture? Romans chapter 5, we'll have a quick look at that. And there's a new song for you. Romans chapter 5. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who now the love of God He shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given, which is given unto us, unto us, unto us. So therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God for our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing this, say knowing this, knowing this, we glory in tribulations, knowing this, that tribulation worketh or activates patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope makes not, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Hallelujah, which is given unto us. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this world. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some die, some would die, would even dare to die. And God commended his love towards us in that while we were sinners, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. While we yet sinners, Christ died for us. But this scripture, I'd like to leave it with you and sow it into your heart. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, for it does not yet 
appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Hallelujah. I thank you, for Father God, for this word. I pray, Lord, that this word would go forth with power and authority, and it will not return void or empty, but it will accomplish that which you please. Now, if you've heard this word for the first time, you've heard the word about being righteous, you've heard the word about being holy and without blame before him in love, you've heard this word and you still would say to yourself, I am not worthy. I am not saved, but I'd like to be. I want you to raise your hand to the screen and receive the blessing of the Lord and say these words with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he died on the cross. And rose again from the dead. And rose again from the dead. I want to make him Lord of my life. I want to make him Lord of my life. I ask him for forgiveness. I ask him for forgiveness. And I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer with me today, I want to hear from you. I'll put my address on the front of the screen. You can send me an email or, or send me something in the mail, uh, whatever. You just let me know that you received Jesus today. I'll be rejoicing with you. I'll send you one of my books and I'll send you some literature. We'll put you on our mailing list and we'll pray for you every day. That's a sincere promise from me. I pray for my mailing list every day. I pray in the power of the Holy Ghost for my mailing list. I pray for healing and deliverance. I pray for prosperity. I pray, Lord God, that all those that have given their life to Jesus and they've told me so, then they would receive a special blessing from you, Lord God. Oh, Jesus. Let the power of God come upon them now, heal the bodies, cleanse their mind, so they can leave all the past behind in Jesus' name. We press on towards the prize of the high calling in God. We thank you, Lord, for the tabernacles of old that we have become. Though the tabernacle of God is now with men in Jesus' name, I receive that glory and I thank you for it. And uh, from everlasting to everlasting, we shall receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We shall go out with joy and rejoice in singing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Have we got a song? Yeah, I have to sing. Good. Well, you come. Hallelujah. My beautiful lady is going to come back with a, a song and we're going to go out with joy and a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. The title of the song that I'd like to sing is Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I just want to give you an encouraging words. What, why does God bless us? We want God to bless our family. We want good health. We want prosperity in life. But most of all, we want the blessing of God himself. His presence, his forgiveness, and his guidance. Of course, we want God's blessing. But why? Why do we want these things? Most of us want God's bless us because we want what's best for us and He knows what's the best. As the world looks upon me and I struggle alone They say I have nothing but the answer 
wrong in my heart I'm rejoicing how I wish they could see thank you Lord for your blessings on me Christian without being religious. So that's a pretty good title. <laughs> How to be a Christian without being religious. And uh, that's free for you today. It's just a free download. Click on it and, uh, and you can it'll be downloaded straight to your desktop. And uh, But we'd like you to be on the mailing list so we can pray for you. And uh, if you have any special needs, put it in an email. And we'll be uh, we'll be in touch with you. God bless you. Bye for now.